Hi there, welcome to BA Consulting Pro and welcome to this another episode of Microsoft Fabric. Do you know that Microsoft Fabric provides a runtime that is gonna use KQL. And what is KQL? KQL is Custo Query Language. And this language you can use to analyze time variant data. Time variant data is nothing but your real time data that you can utilize from the log files or maybe from the IoT devices. And how you can do that? Well, if you are the one who are interested in analyzing the real time data using Custo in Microsoft Fabric, then this video is for you. So please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm gonna let you know everything about it. Before we proceed further, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you stay up to date with our, all the latest videos and updates. And also, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs button and share with your friends. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. Over here, right now, I'm on my Power BI service portal. So first of all, what you have to do, you have to simply come here at the bottom, left-hand side on your screen, and you have to come to this real-time analytics. Now, I'm gonna come here. Here you can find the different items over here which are already in preview. So please note that whatever we are going to do here today, it's in preview. It's not generally available, but still you can utilize this runtime in Microsoft Fabric, which is going to help you to analyze real time data. In this video, we are not going to use the real time data. Actually, we are going to use just one CSV file, which has the sales data provided by Microsoft. And based on the Microsoft document, I'm going to help you that how you can do it step by step. The very first thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a workspace and that workspace is going to be my own fabric trial capacity. However, if you have PPU, that is Power BI Premium per user workspace or maybe Power BI Premium capacity, you can also utilize the same one. So what you have to do, you have to simply come here to the workspace on your left hand side and create a new workspace. I'm going to give it a name, real time analytics. That's all I'm going to give it. Here it's saying that this workspace is, this name is available, so we can definitely utilize this one. Now, you have to go to this advanced settings and over here, you have to select your premium capacity based workspace. Here, I'm already using trial, which is my Microsoft Fabric trial. If you don't know how to use the trial version of Microsoft Fabric, then you can check out our previous videos. I'm gonna provide a link in the description section where I have mentioned everything that how you can get started with Microsoft Fabric. All right, guys, now simply click on this apply button. We are not going to make any more changes over here and within no time you can see that we have one empty workspace over here that we are going to utilize later on now come back to this on real-time analytics and here we are going to create a new database first of all and how we can do that for that you have to just follow very simple steps first of all you have to click on this kql database which is going to be my custo query language database and why i'm saying so this database is going to let you run kql queries to analyze your data so click on this one and here you have to also provide a name. I'm going to say real time data underscore QQL. That's all I'm going to say. And it's going to have type new database by default. However, if you have to choose this new shortcut database, you can choose it over here too, but we are not going to do that. So let's keep it default new database and click on this create button. It will take some time and it's going to create in almost no time. So it's working on it. And now here is your database. Now, once you come onto this window, you are going to find a lot of options over here. You can just use the sample data if you're going to click over here. Also, you can load from the local file. You can use one lake, Azure storage, event hub and pipeline. Event hub is actually the main source from where we get the real time data from IoT devices. If you don't know what are the IoT devices, which is Internet of Things and how we get the data in real time, then you have to check other our real time data analytics video, which I'm going to provide link in the description section. So please don't forget to check them out. Right now, we are going to use simply this local file over here. So click on this local file. And here you have to add a new table over here. As I mentioned that we are going to use not a particular data from our IoT device because I don't have that one, to be honest. So we are going to use one CSV file that I have downloaded from Microsoft website itself. I'm going to provide a link in the description section from where you can also download it or check the Microsoft Fabric documentation where you are going to get this file as well. So click on this and I'm going to give it a name. So name would be sales only or you can also keep the s as a capital letter click on this button and now you get this option over here drag files here or browse files over here so we are going to browse the file which is on my system and please forget everything else and click on this sales file 
So what I have done so far, I have first of all created a one blank workspace on premium capacity, which is on my trial capacity by Microsoft Fabric. After that, I have also created a new database, which is my KQL database, and that you can create in real-time analytics environment in Microsoft Fabric. And now you can see that my table has been loaded. I have to simply go to next. Here, I ideally don't need to make any of the changes, but if you want to select the file format, you can select over here. You can also select the schema definition, and in the advanced one, you can see that sales underscore mapping is going to be my mapping. If your file has a first row as a header, that you can select it over here as well, but we don't need to do that. Simply click on this finish button, and in no time, your data has gonna be loaded into your KQL database. So as you can see that my data has been loaded. If you want to explore some of the other options, like you want to explore the results, you can click over here. If you want to create a dashboard directly from here, you can do that, but we want to run certain operations on this particular table or basically on this database. I want to summarize my data and only after that, I want to create a dashboard and a report. So we can do that. Or if you would like to delete the ingested data that you have just ingested over here, you can also delete it from here. So right now I'm just simply going to click on this close button and let's see what we have over here. So my data has been loaded. This is the size of my data. These are some of the details, who created it, where is the region, created on and so on. Also you will find this table sizes over here created by this particular email address which is my email address connected via consulting pro.com and here on my left hand side i have the table that i would like to analyze all the data that i would like to analyze first of all if you don't know the kql how you can analyze it with no knowledge simply come on this table and click on these three different points and here you can say query table so what i'm trying to do over here i'm just trying to query my table over here and i say okay show any 100 records that's the first thing but you can do much more than that and what you can do you can also get the schema you can also use a sql or simply kql so simply click over here the new window is going to pop up over here where it's going to show you top 100 records so this is over here but if you would like to learn kql i'm again going to provide the link in the description section and you can also search for microsoft documentation where you are going to learn all the different commands being utilized to run KQL queries. This is very simple to SQL, but a bit different. If you have a knowledge of SQL language, then you won't face any problems. You can easily run this. It's just you need to know what are the different syntaxes to run over here. Now, I'm gonna run certain more queries over here. So the very first query that I will try to get it, I'm gonna get the data for one particular item. And we know that we have to use the where clause if we are trying to filter out the data. So we are gonna use this one. And if I'm gonna run this query, somehow it's not going to run. And what's the reason for that? I'll just let you know. So run this query and you see that, okay, where operator failed this, 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 because it's not gonna find the sales. And if you are gonna just change this letter sales to this one, you can run this query. So always please remember that it is case sensitive over here. You should provide the exact table name that you have in your database or KQL database. Now I'm gonna run it and I can see the data for this particular item, which is over here, road 250 black comma 48. That's how you can run it. Now let's run some more queries over there where I'm gonna try to filter my data furthermore. Now I would like to filter my data based on a year. So what I can do, I can run this query where again, I have to change this sales and here I'm going to run this for one this particular product and my date time is going to be my year which is greater than 2020. So just come this and run it once more. And here this has been filtered it out. You can check all the dates or the date over here. These are in 2021 or greater than 2020. That's what you can do. If you want to sort, you want to do some operations, you can do it over here. Similar to that, if you would like to just show empty columns, you can do that. And if you would like to perform further operations, you can do that as well. And even you can search. If you would like to check the statistics, which you can check over here as well. All right, now I would like to do this in between some dates. So how to do that? For that, you have to again write a query. Here, remember that in KQL, whenever you are gonna put a certain filter, then you have to write in where, where, where close. Now I'm going to run this query. Again, I'm gonna change my sales. And here, I'm gonna run this one. So here, what we are doing, we are going to select the data from the sales table, where order date is between 1-1-2020 till, till the end of 2020. Also, I'm going to summarize my total revenue column, which is over here. So what I'm doing, where is my unit price over here? I'm going to sum it by item and I'm gonna call it as my total revenue column and then I'm sorting it by item. So let's run this query over here. 
and you are going to get your result. So what we have done over here, we have just summarized the data for year 2020. That's all we have done. Now, if you would like to do more operations on that, you would like to highlight certain columns, you want to get more columns, you can do that as well. That's not a big problem, but for that you have to go through the KQL query. Right now, I just picked some of the queries from the Microsoft documentation. If you want me to make more tutorial on KQL queries, please leave your comment in the comment section. I'm going to create a KQL query tutorial as well for you. So don't worry about that. Now, we are going to create a simple Power BI report from this data. And how you can do that? For that, we have to create basically a Power BI report. But before that, we have to save this query. So far, if you haven't understand what we have done so far, let me take a recap. We first created an empty workspace, then we created one KQL database where we loaded sales data in a table. In ideal scenarios, you are going to ingest the data from IoT devices directly using Event Hub, but you can also connect your KQL database through the log analytics or log database where you are going to get the data in real time and then you can perform the same operations or KQL queries on the top of that KQL database table like we have done so far. That is what the real time data analytics. You are getting data in real time, you are performing your queries and creating your dashboards on the top of that. So that is what we are achieving over here. Now we are going to save this query and we are going to name it KQL real time and I'm going to save it. So it would take a couple of seconds to save it and here it is. Now you can directly create one Power BI report from here, which is the option here, build Power BI report. However, before going further, you should remember that this feature is in preview. Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft, Microsoft Fabric team is still working on it and it's being improved based on the feedback that we are giving. Microsoft team, if you are hearing my feedback, please know that whenever we are using this build Power BI report option, the window is quite small. That should open either a separate window or a big window where we can use it. So let's click on this. As you can see that in this preview window, this is not really a very big window. It's a very small one and there's no option that I can expand it. So it's very difficult for me to utilize this window and create a report in that. But let's try if we can create. I'm going to use my item over here and let's wait. It still didn't come. Ideally, it should come over here. So that's another problem with this one. So now you have to do it again. And now it's going to show in the second time. So please improve this feature. And also, please provide option that we can enlarge this one. Now I'm going to build a chart over here, which is going to be my clustered column chart. And then I'm going to use the revenue as by axis. That's all I'm going to do. If you would like to highlight, you want to put some name, etc. You can do that, guys. I'm going to name sales by item and go to file and you have to save it. Also, you can use this view option where you can use a different one, but these are not going to work over here. Simply click on save. Here you have to give it a name to this report. I'm going to say real time sales report. Click on this and you have to choose your workspace as well. So we are going to go our workspace that we have created previously and click on this save button. So it's going to save very soon and it's being saved over there. You have done an amazing job so far over here. If you don't know any of the steps, how to do that, how you should make it, please do let me know in the comment section and I'm going to help you out over there. Now we are going to go back to my workspace, which is over here. So let me go to my real time workspace. And what? My report is still not there. Why? 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 It's happening to me. Well, nothing is happening to you. You just need to refresh it and your report is going to appear in no time. And here is my real time sales report. So click on this. And you can see that your report is there. And now also I can see that my item is over here, which I added first and it was not appearing somehow, maybe because of the small window size. So team, if you are hearing my feedback, please try to make it better so that we can utilize this feature. Now come here, click on this and I can simply remove this one. So let me remove it. And if you would like to put some highlights, some text box, etc., let me do that. Says report. You can enlarge this one to let's say 40, make it bold, and use it here. And if you would like to do some more formatting, you can do that over there. But I'm not going to do anything except I'm going to save it. So let me just refresh it. 
and here is your real-time sales report that we created in real-time analytics using Microsoft Fabric. What do you think guys about it? Do you think it's going to be a game changer? Or do you think there are lots of improvements required for this feature to be used in Microsoft Fabric? Please do share your feedback with us in the comment section. And if you have any question or if you would like us to make any more videos, please do let me know in the comment section. If you are looking for any of the training programs for Microsoft Power BI, Microsoft Fabric, or maybe anything related to Azure Analytics Services, please do let us know. Till next time, keep exploring Microsoft Fabric. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe it now. See you in the next video.